here are the clips and down here I have added some sound effects and I have not recorded these sound effects I've actually downloaded them from these websites that I have given you the links to and video files look like this you can see if you have thumbnails on they will be uh, showing a little thumbnail obviously and if you do here it says what is a mob file and here you can see that these are uh, sound files so I'll just go back to this because I think it's easier and if I double click on this one I can listen to it and that's the pouring water and this one here this is sort of an electric disturbance sound. Say that I want to use that. I'll just drag it down to the timeline wherever I want to be. I keep it. Uh, so I will put that on here on channel 6 down here and pull it to the start. And what we can do now is to make this a little bit smaller and then To see that this is a sound file, there's another thing we can do. We can actually expand or make it larger like this. We can just drag it. You can do that on each channel. You can do that on the video channels too. So you can do that on an individual clip like that. Or you can go to this symbol over here and here you can make all audio channels at the same time a bit larger. And I will do that because it's a little bit helpful. So, what can you do with a sound file? Well, you can do, and now we can just click that away so it doesn't seem. So, this clip here is now on channel 7. And let's say that I have multiple, if I want to play it over here, you can see that I have multiple sound clips at the same place. So, if I play this, we can play over here where there's a little bit more action. quite loud that this this noise anyway if I just want to listen to it I click on S and that's for solo now I can hear any of the other sounds so if I go up here and listen to this sound which I know is a water sound if I click solo here I can only hear it if I unclick it I can hear all the other sounds as well so that can be a good thing if you want to just listen to one clip at a time because when you start to work with sound you will most definitely have a few um, clips here uh, you might uh, different sound clips you will have those that comes with the camera and you will have maybe some recording that you've done or maybe you have two cameras an A camera and a B camera they have uh, separate sounds and then you might have a voiceover you might have sound effects and then you might have music so it quickly increases, becomes really large, and then if you scroll up and down like this, it can be a little bit annoying. That's what we're going to use, go into this section in a bit, the, the fair light. What can you do with this, just like this with this clip? Well, what you can do, if you go to it, and we can make it a little bit larger, so it becomes a little bit larger like that, and then we can scroll it up. So if I here, you will see that better on your own computers. There is a little white line. Now you see that if you, if, I, if you pull the cursor there, put the cursor there, you get these two white arrows. And that means that you can lower the volume. And now you can see the white line when it comes down here. So if, I, if you take it all the way down, it goes down to where there is no sound. And I will put this on solo so we can only listen to this. All right. And then I can pull it up. And that's too loud so I will just reverse so this is the original whoop the original sound level and I might want to lower that it's a little bit too high so if I, I can just drag it down like this and lower it and then you see it goes that's minus three decibels minus five decibels so it can be a little bit tricky to do that but it's it's a rough way of doing it you can do it there okay so that was that. And then you might want to, when it starts, when this clip starts, it just starts a hard cut. You might want to, to have a slow uh, increase of the sound. So if you, if you put the, the cursor on the clip again, you get a little white 
yeah, a little something white up in the corner there and one in the other corner at the other end too. If you pull that one, you get a curve here and this curve is from zero to the volume that you have put in there. You can also alter the curve if you want to have it like steeper at the end or more shallow at the end by doing that. This is also something that you can do with your video clips and I will show that here. So I will take this video clip here, the one of the cup on the floor, and I'm holding on Alt or Option on the keyboard and I'm dragging it and that means that I, have co I made a copy. And then I'll just take another clip, I'll take this clip and I'll do the same and I'll place this on top of it like that. And here you can see that if I put the uh, playhead here, so now it's this clip that we can see and then, oh I have to turn on that video, sorry, that channel, it was off. So here is this clip, the cup and then hard clip to the, the table shot. And what you can do with this, when you put two, uh, two or more clips on top of each other like this, the top one here, you can go on to here to comp if you click on Inspector up here. I should turn off the mixer. Inspector up here. You have something called Composite, because that's what it does. You composite two uh, uh, video files with each other. And this is like working with layers in Photoshop. So here you have Opacity, so if I just dial that down, you see, if we play them together now, you see there are two videos on top of each other. And here you have those uh, blend mode is called in Photoshop and here we call them compos compos composite mode. So yeah, so this is one way of just playing to you and then you can add as many videos on top of each other as you like to make a composite video. Uh, so I'm going to uh, pull this up to 100% or you can click on this thing that takes it back to its original thing. Alright, but if you want to do a transition, you know you can go to effects here and go to video transition and get a cross dissolve and you can put that like in between two clips like that and then it, oh that's not going to look very good, so put it between two different clips here, like that, and then you have the transition. That's when you have them on the same timeline, but if you put them like this, then you can do as we just did with the sound thing, you can just pull this white thing up here and then you have a transition. So that works on both sound and on the video files. But we are going to be on sound, so I did that thing here on that stuff and now I think that that is all okay. And you saw that I actually down, I, I took this mixer away, but I, now I turn it on. So up here you can turn on and off the mixer and to make things a little bit, yeah, so we can do, we can check here how many channels have I got. I've got one, one, two, three, four, five, six channels. I'm going to delete this one because that's something I just added now and it was on solo so I don't want to use that one. M means mute, so that means that if you, if you have a lot of clips on top of each other and you want to mute someone, you, you want to see what it sounds like, you, you click on mute. So that's pretty handy, this uh, solo and mute track. Those you can also find over here, solo and mute track. And here you can see that I have changed some names here. So originally it says here uh, A1, and that's just the channels. Um, A2 and uh, or it says audio one, audio like here, audio six, audio seven. But this is probably what you would, you can change names here and then you can write camera one, if you have a camera two, this might be the camera two and then you might have sound effects, sound effects and a voiceover and then maybe one is uh, music. And that means also then that you can change the sound levels on an entire channel. So you can do here, you can change the clip volume and here you can click, you can change the, the entire volume of that channel. So let's actually pull down that electric thing again here and 
Let's solo it again. So this is how the volume of this, this channel. And it's channel seven. And here I can pull this one. I can do it and play. And you can hear the difference. And you can also see here the sound meter, how it goes up. And when I can do this, no, then it mute. Um, the sound meter should be never go away from yellow. It should be in its green and its yellow. It should actually be in the yellow. Yellow is the best uh, uh, area of that, that meter. So if I play here again, you see the yellow is good. But, I mean, you might want to have it lower than that because you want this sound to be low in the background. But what you don't want, I don't think I can pull this up so it goes red. Oh, yeah, I can. You don't want it to be red because you see here, it leaves a red little mark up there, red bar up there. It means that it has actually peaked over uh, the, the, the top level of what, where the sound, the digital sound, goes into to something else. So you don't, you really don't, I, I will explain another day what these, the terms for this. So you want, This is a sort of a flat level of one uh, But you see the other sounds are going up and down. And then you have to be careful so that you don't have one, when it goes up, that it goes up and does that peak because then it might ruin uh, sound after that. It, it creates um, some disturbance, some digital disturbance. So you don't want that. Now I'm going to solo channel one here. You can hear when the water is coming down. And this is not the water, this is just like a generic water file that I have. So you have to find, some, you know, where the water, maybe somewhere here, it hits the cup. And that's where you want to put the sound of your, uh, of the water. Or over here where we have, uh, I will, here I'm putting down the cup. And I will solo this sound here. It's very low, but nevertheless, it's here on channel three. So if you have it open here, you can see, I'll zoom in a little bit more so we can see that. That little bump here on there, that's the sound. Now we're gonna move that up. That, that is where the sound is of when, the cup, when a cup is put on a table like that and I think we can do it raise the volume there a little bit so you see you also here it's actually a longer clip because it's sort of a double tap here and then you might want to do then you if you scroll and then don't have this snap tool on you scroll and you find where you think the sound should be and then you move the sound to where that peak is if it is like a, a, a tap like the, in this case